Hello watch enthusiasts! Now it's been about a year since I last spoke about GMT watches, and some of the best options on the market, and since that video quite a few things have changed on the market, where new models have been released, but also new prices and, um, and changes to the market have occurred, and so I felt it was appropriate to speak about this theme again today. And in this video I'd like to speak really about everything from an incredibly resilient Zin dive watch with a, a GMT function, to of course uh, a new Tudor release, but also some slightly less well-known models from Alpina and from Grand Seiko, which I think offer an enormous amount at their respective, respective price points. Now the first piece I'd like to speak about is a new model from Christopher Ward, which is the C65 Trident GMT. And this is a model which really bridges the gap between a, a vintage style watch and something which is far more modern in terms of its execution. Now in truth this is a piece which is extremely thematically driven. Because Christopher Ward themselves talk about this watch in terms of thinking about the Bond films from the 1960s, and from the perspective of this being a watch which, whilst not inspired by anything made in the in that period, in terms of, of being a remake, such as we've seen from homage watches, it's more of a watch which rekindles the spirit of that period. And the watch itself is more expensive than some options I've spoken about before in videos speaking about GMT watches, notably last year's for example. However, I feel the, the additional price paid for this piece really does put in a great deal of quality, but also into a piece which can be enjoyed for many years as a very uh, versatile piece, because it's a model which looks just as at home on the wrist of someone wearing a suit as it does uh, on, on the, the wrist of a diver, or indeed, and perhaps most appropriately, on the wrist of a traveller. To first speak about the case of the watch, it's built from 316L stainless steel, so the, very much the industry standard, which will be able to res resist corrosion very, very well. And it's 41mm from side to side by 12.05mm thick by 47.1mm from lug to lug. And this means you get a size which is both modern, but also very modest um, in terms of being a, a dive watch with a box style of, um, of sapphire crystal, because that does add to the thickness of this watch. And the watch resistance of this watch, again, is somewhere between a, uh, a devoted dive watch and something which is far more of a GMT traveller's watch, because it's watch resistant to 150 metres, um, which gives you 500 feet of watch resistance. And this is an interesting depth because it's not something you normally see a dive watch with, but I think it does demonstrate the fact that this watch is committed to giving you a screw down crown and, uh, and resilience to the elements, and so you can dive with this watch. However, it's not a piece which is directly aimed at this market as a result of its slender case. The bezel follows a similar line, because whereas it could be more, more contrasting and more easily red with a black insert, they've chosen a brushed steel insert on this very fine toothed bezel which I think looks wonderful in relation to the design of the case, because it's very narrow but still very legible thanks to the black painted uh, numerals, and of course this is a 24 hour bezel, and so you can use it to track a time zone. However, in order to adhere with the fact that this watch should still be a, a, to some degree a dive watch, it has a luminous pip at 12, and is unidirectional to aid you in, in use underwater. And to a large degree it's the detailing on this watch which makes it such a beautiful offering, because one sees these sharp polished bevels down the edge of the brushed case, with brushed elements really throughout, especially on the case back, for example, which has a deeply embossed Trident logo in keeping with the dive watch heritage of this timepiece. Now, this dive watch element is taken to the dial, which is matte black and has the embossed Christopher Ward logo sunken at the 12 o'clock position. And whilst this isn't a particularly normal uh, view or a particularly common view to take, I rather like their logo with those two flags, although I must say I'm not too keen on their the script of Christopher Ward at the, um, the 9 o'clock position, though this isn't really a problem for me at least. And one has a high contrast dial with applied indices, and they're not applied in terms of being metal and being polished, but rather they're applied rather deep uh, luminous indices in superluminova, which is aged to give you this soft custard sort of tone, and is extremely legible with two strokes at 12. This colour is also matched on the hands, and that large uh, Rolex um, Explorer 2 style of uh, GMT hand in orange. The hands themselves are also very beautifully delicate, while still remaining very useful and legible thanks to that large amount of luminova, but also having brush tops and, uh, and bevels their edges to make them more interesting, whilst there's a very high contrast GMT hand as well in orange as that bright triangle. And of course one has the date at 3 o'clock um, as a result of the movement, which is finished in black, which I think is a nice touch to diminish its presence on the dial. One also has a rather beautiful domed style of, uh, of sapphire crystal, which really completes the look. And beating inside this watch is a Swiss-made ETA2893-2, which is very much the industry standard for a reliable Swiss-made automatic um, GMT movement. And this provides you with 21 joules running at 4 hertz. It is also anti-magnetic with some shock-resistant properties, and of course provides you with that GMT function. And whilst not the most advanced of movements providing a GMT function, it does still provide you with everything you might want for this price range. And so the watch is available either on a selection of, of leather, leather and canvas style straps for £895, 
or for 960 you can go for a full metal bracelet, which may well be the better option in the long run, in case you choose to, uh, to, to have the bracelet afterwards, and as a result we'll have to pay for that. Now the next piece I'd like to speak about is strikingly similar to the Christopher Ward in terms of its aim and its market position, because this is a piece which is the Alpina Start Timer Pilot Heritage, and some mid-century inspired GMT watch with a rotating 24-hour bezel in addition to the date, and of course a GMT display. However, there I feel the similarities do end, because these pieces have very different intentions of what they want to be, and what they're trying to show. And the start timer, I feel, is perhaps a more refined piece, in terms of, uh, of being more dressy, and in many ways uh, much more clean where its aesthetics are concerned, if you want something which is closer to a dress watch than the slightly more rugged Christopher Ward. And the piece itself is stainless steel with a 42mm case, which is 12mm thick. The case itself is also very mid-century in its styling, with this sunburst style of brushing on the top of the case, and then with polished bevels on the rest. One also has semi-hooded lugs with quite a short lug to lug length, which allows the strap to sit very closely and very tightly into the case, and prevent it from, uh, from stretching out over the wrist and becoming larger than it needs to be. The other element about the case to note is the presence of two crowns, because one sees there's one crown just past two o'clock, and one just before four. And the functions of these crowns appear rather clear in relation to the way the dial is laid out, because the top crown controls the internal rotating bezel with its 24-hour graduations, whilst the bottom crown controls the movement of the hands and also the date. But just as the lines of the case converge on the centre of the dial, this is very much the part of the watch which draws the eye. And it's available in four different colours, with the, um, the, the dial available in copper, a copper sort of colour, light blue, navy or dark grey, of course with the dark grey being the most subtle, and that copper being an extremely bright and rather interesting choice, although I must say I would go for one of the blues, just because I feel they speak to me most. Now the dial itself is very multifaceted. Around the edge of the dial one sees that to that graduated bezel, but then one sees around the, the main part of the dial, which is that to the area which is signed with Alpina, one sees the applied indices which are applied in steel, or at least um, a metal tone, which are then polished to give a, a rather attractive gleam and a great deal of lustre. These are also luminous with a, a square of loom around their edge, and of course these are matched by luminous white painted hands. This edge of the dial is also given a sunburst treatment, which allows it to take on a greater colour if you go for those particular versions, and also adds to form to the grey version and makes it a more interesting, rather subtle watch, and thus creates a rather interesting dichotomy, which I think will make this watch a rather attractive option. Rotating in the centre of the dial is perhaps the most interesting element about the display of this watch, because rather than having a separate GMT hand, Alpina have chosen to give it a rotating ring in the centre of the dial. And this follows a very similar tradition of design to some of the, the JLC Memovox watches. However, in this case it acts as that GMT hand, and sits beside the rather attractive faceted edge to the date window. And this rotates of course once every 24 hours, and shows you the other time zone. However, interestingly, this movement which powers the watch is something which really does add to the value of this piece, because it's rather a complex piece made specifically by Alpina for this particular timepiece, and their range of GMT watches. And sitting behind the embossed case back, which gives 100 metres of watch resistance, this watch has the calibre AL555. And this is a movement which is a modified Solita, but made specifically for these watches by Alpina, and it gives you a true GMT function. And so aside from running at 4Hz, having hacking and hand winding, this movement allows you to control the, uh, the hour hand of the watch, that's the 12 hour hand, set separately from the rest of the functions of the watch. And this means that if you're travelling between time zones, you can set the GMT function to home time or GMT, and from there on you can simply control the, uh, the, the current or the, the local hour hand, and be able to move that around the dial as you please, to be able to adjust for different time zones as you travel. And this is much more convenient than the standard way that most um, automatic styles of GMT watches function, where you have to change the GMT hand itself independently, which creates for a bit of confusion when you're travelling, and can be a bit irksome. And so for the price of £1,090 on a leather strap, I think this watch offers a great deal to a buyer, as far as being something which is both quite robust, in terms of having 100 meter water resistance, but also extremely elegant, with its slim case, and its very classically correct design. The third watch in this video really couldn't step away further than the other two, because this is the Zin U2 and is potentially the, the most robust of mechanical dive watches on the market with a GMT function. And this is a 44mm watch by 15.5mm thick, making it a very large piece, but one which I think warrants its size extremely well through its functionality and the fact that this is one of the best specced watches on the market. Of course, bearing in mind how technologically advanced this watch is, one does have to take account of this and speak much more technically than one normally would about a watch. 
because starting with the 44mm of the case, which is certainly very large, but uh, extremely carefully pr produced, with quite short lugs, and also very modest sizing around the edges, giving most of that size to the bezel, the case itself is made from a very interesting choice of steel, which is submarine steel. And this is a type of steel that's used in the submarine industry, as would be suggested by the name, and is, for example, used by the, the German Navy with their U-212 submarines as an extremely corrosion-resistant, but also very scratch-resistant type of stainless steel. It should be noted there are also two other types of finishing for this case, because whilst all versions come with a bead-blasted finish to minimise reflections, but also give a uniform matted surface, the case does come either with a, a simple style of, um, of submarine steel case, but there is one other treatment to the metal which can be, can be applied, which is tegmenting. And this is applied as default for the, to the bezel, but you can specify for it to be for the full case. And this is a hardening process which makes the surface of the metal much, much harder, and makes it pretty much impervious to scratches and nicks during daily wear. Which is certainly an interesting choice, and I think used on the bezel it's particularly useful, in order to be able to minimise that area of the watch um, which is going to be bumped the most, and minimise the damage to that over time. One also has a black coating, and this is always applied over the tegmented surface, and hardens the metal even further in order to give it this black finish, but also to prevent scratches to an even higher degree. But of course, as a dive watch, other technologies help this watch achieve its 2000 meter water resistance. And notably, this watch doesn't need a helium escape valve, despite being used for saturation dives, as, um, as it's able to resist this anyway. But one has a very large screw-down crown at the 4 o'clock position, in addition to a thick and uh, double anti-reflective sapphire crystal on the front of the watch. But aside from that, one also has a few technologies to protect this watch against temperature and against, um, against deviation in timekeeping over time as a result of, um, of, of general wear to the movement. Notably, it features there their proprietary AR dehumidifying technology. And the way this works is that the case itself isn't filled with air, but rather with, uh, with argon, which is an inert gas and, and won't, uh, won't cause damage to the parts, but also the inside of the case is kept extremely dry. And this is achieved through the use of several copper sulphate capsules, which are, are embedded in the case and also the dial. And these have two functions, the first of which is to, to absorb the moisture inside the case, and you can actually monitor them as well as their second function, because at 6 o'clock you can see one of the capsules, in addition to one embedded in the side of the case, and they change colour from white to a sort of dark blue, depending upon how much moisture they've absorbed, which gives you an indication of when they need to be replaced as well. But to also help this watch become a, a suitable sort of dive watch, these do also uh, prevent any sort, of, uh, any sort of fogging up of the inside of the crystal under temperature change, and so the watch will still work perfectly normally between minus 45 degrees C and plus 80 degrees C. It does appear clear with this watch that its design is, is very much key to the reading of the time, as opposed to using the GMT as a key functionality. And this is seen on the dial, where white, as a result of the fact that this watch is designed to be a mission timer, is seen as the colour for the, the elements for reading the time, and so one sees that, that, that around the luminous track around the edge of the dial, and also on the, uh, the main hands with the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. One also has a large luminous triangle at 12 o'clock on the, on the bezel, which incidentally is no, uh, no normal bezel because it's a captive bezel. What this means is that it's actually screwed into place to avoid it popping off if, if knocked on a rock or something, but also in order to, um, to make it last longer and really add durability to it. But then on the dial one also has this red section, and this is seen on the 24 hours of the GMT, which are printed on the middle of the dial, in addition to a shorter hand for the GMT function, and of course the fact that the, um, the branding is also in red, because of course you wouldn't have to read that quite, uh, quite so readily. The tool watch functionality of this watch is also seen in the movement, which doesn't take on a particularly complicated form, as it uses an ETA2893-2, which is incidentally the same movement as seen in the Christopher Ward, um, which I showed you earlier. However, in this case it's been prepared to an extremely high degree by Zinn, and are notorious for making extremely good movements, where the, the movement finishing is excellent, but also the testing with these movements is of quite phenomenal standards. And of course, to test these watches, they are frozen to test the, um, the, the, the fact that these watches are able to resist those temperatures, which I think demonstrates the care that's in take with these movements. These also do have anti-magnetic and shock-resistant properties, as well as having that GMT function, which is very, very traditionally presented. And whilst this doesn't have quite the ease of use of that Alpina, I feel the functionality of GMT is very different on this watch, because whereas on the Alpina you would use it as your GMT time and then change the local time, on this watch it's more of a sort of a set home time, if you will, as opposed to the time you're normally reading off the hands, and so it isn't such a problem. Now the price for this rather remarkable watch ranges from between £2,295 for the standard untegmented cased version uh, on a leather strap, all the way up to £3,000 for the, the black version with a tegmented case on the bracelet. And I feel for this price the watch offers a heck of a lot to a buyer, 
and really offers a watch which has an enormous amount of functionality but also is a very overbuilt type of dive watch that really will be able to survive anything you throw at it. The penultimate piece I'd like to speak about is a new piece from Tudor released at Baselworld this year. And it's a model which has, has uh, been surrounded by a bit of controversy recently because there's been a problem with the date change on some of these models. However, I must say I have no doubt that Tudor will resolve these problems, and it really is normal to have some slight teething problems on a small number of pieces um, at the start of production for any piece, so I really wouldn't let this put you off going for one of these. But this is the Tudor Black Bay GMT, uh, a watch which takes its inspiration from uh, Rolex GMT Masters of the mid-century, because Tudor didn't have really an equivalent in the same way as their Snowflake dive watches. However, with this piece, one has a hybrid between those Snowflake dive watches and their reproduction in the form of the Black Bay, and the concept of a Pepsi GMT Master, and I think the product is a very, very interesting one, with a very impressive movement, and a general build which I think doesn't disappoint. And whilst competing for the same price segment as that Zin I've just shown you, this is a fundamentally different market. This is a far more of a dressy sort of alternative to that Zin, and I feel they should be compared uh, very carefully, because uh, both watches do serve very, very different purposes, and thus are difficult to compare directly. But this watch features a 41mm case, which is quite thick at 15mm thick, though do hold that thought because there is a proviso there, and it's 50mm from lug to lug, giving it a, a both a, a sizeable but still very, very wearable size on the wrist. And one should consider the fact that these oyster cases have a very, very traditional form and do hug the wrist extremely comfortably, as well as being an extremely well-refined piece of design, which works very, very well on the vast majority of wrists. Of course, 41mm it is slightly larger than a conventional 40mm oyster case, although with a slimmer bezel, one does tend to notice that uh, it does wear very, very well. The case is also extremely well finished, with polished sides and also polished bevels running along the edge of the lugs, which is something which isn't seen on Rolex cases anymore, and I think is a shame, because they are attractive elements. One also has care taken with the ergonomics of the watch, with a heavily domed case back, which sinks into the wrist very well, and also a bevel along the very bottom of the case edge, which allows it to not scratch the wrist when moving. The case also features rotary brushing on the top of the case, which helps to create this uh, this particular form of quite old-fashioned style, but still with a great deal of quality, and I think this mirrors the bezel which rotates atop it. Of course, aside from the mid-century large screw-down crown on the side of the case, the bezel itself is a major attribute of this watch in this Pepsi configuration, with blue on the top to symbolise night, and then red at the top at the bottom rather to symbolise day. Well, this bezel also rotates around the, the edge of the dial to allow you to, to show a second time zone, or indeed a third time zone if you need it. Sitting in the centre of this bezel is a crystal which protrudes somewhat from the centre of the case, and it's a domed style of sapphire crystal which gives a rather wonderful form to the centre of the dial, and also helps the, the watch to take on a more vintage style, despite not having anything which is overtly vintage about its design or prematurely aged. And this does add a certain thickness to the case itself, and does bring it up to 15mm thick, though I must say I would take this, this measurement with a grain of salt, as a result of the fact that this does add a certain amount that won't be perceived whilst wearing the watch. Underneath this crystal is a dial which is another rather attractively detailed piece, because it's subtly domed in the, the style of other black bays, to give a certain amount of depth to the dial, but also it features subtle changes like the fact that the indices are not aged luminova on this watch, but rather clear white, which is a good choice, I feel, to mirror the, the silver of the bezel. But also they're moved further out and slightly shrunken, which allows the whole dial to take on a slightly larger form and helps with the GMT orientation of that, that fourth hand. Of course, taking on a more luxurious form, the hands are polished metal in addition to that red style of, of snowflake GMT hand, which also matches the hour hand and the second hand, whilst one also has metal rims around the individual indices, which are luminous, in addition to the date at the 3 o'clock position. Sitting behind the case back, which guarantees 200 metres of water resistance, this watch features the, uh, the Tudic Caliber MT5652, which is based on their previous um, COSC-certified in-house calibers, and features a 70-hour power reserve, bi-directional automatic winding, and is of course COSC-certified as a chronometer. It does also feature the independent style of GMT function, which is much more traditionally seen on, uh, on high-end high -end GMT watches. And so this, like that Alpina, allows the hour hand to be moved independently, instead of having to, uh, to move the GMT hand independently, which makes changing time zones much easier, and allows you to not have to reset the watch each time. Whilst undecorated, this is the sort of movement which shows a great deal going on behind the scenes, because it features, for example, a balanced bridge to enable it to be more shock resistant, in addition to a, a screwed balance, and this means that rather than adjusting the length of the balance spring, you simply change the weighting of the balance wheel itself, thus uh, changing the, the period of each, um, each, each oscillation. 
It also has elements such as, uh, for example, silicon springs, which make the whole movement a, uh, a very reliable piece once it's been refined. And as a general concept, these Tudor movements have worked extremely well for several years now, and so I wouldn't see any problem with these modern set of, uh, of GMT movements. Now the price for this watch is, is a little bit higher than previous Black Bay models, moving up to £2,570 for the strap, and then 2790 for the bracelet. But I feel for what you're getting with the movement and the case, and the general build of the watch, it really is a fantastic option for those looking for a GMT timepiece. And of course the bracelet you get it on, if you do choose that, is this wonderful brivet, uh, riveted style from, from Tudor, which looks like older bracelets produced by the brand, and gives real elegance to the watch, and so that personally would be my choice, because if you do buy it on the strap, there is a chance you may want the bracelet later on. For the final piece I'd like to present, this is perhaps not the most uh, orthodox choice for the £5,000-plus uh, price spec segment of GMT watches, but this is the Grand Seiko GMT SBG201G. And those who know me will know that I have a great deal of admiration for Grand Seiko, because I think they produce some of the most interesting watches on the market at the moment. And this piece is no exception. Now, the case is stainless steel and uh, is, um, is 44mm by 14.7mm thick. And so it's by no means a small watch, but I think wears its size extremely well thanks to its case design and its case build. Now, in terms of the, the way the, the case is, um, is designed, one has a rotating bezel on the top, the crown placed at 4 o'clock, and a, um, a metal bracelet at that uh, around the edges of the case, which allows the watch to have a great deal of balance on the wrist, but also to add to the beautiful finishing this watch is given. Now the case also features drilled lugs, which is a nice choice if you, uh, if you want to change out straps and bracelets quickly and easily, and so this is an addition which I appreciate. Whilst one also has a very attractively finished Grand Seiko crown, with a very deeply engraved Grand Seiko logo, which matches very, very well with that on the dial. On the outside of the case, one also sees a rotating bezel with both brushed and polished finishes around its edge, and of course a sapphire inlaid bezel insert, which allows the whole bezel to be extremely legible, whilst also having a gleam and luster which matches the, the single-sided anti-reflective sapphire crystal on the front of the watch. And it should be noted that for many, the, the single-sided anti-reflective coating is probably better, because it means that you won't scratch the external um, coating, which is softer than sapphire, which is often something which causes some, some marks on the surface of the crystal, which otherwise wouldn't be caused if that, that, that uh, coating wasn't in place. Then, of course, if one looks at the, the detailing around the case, one sees an exceptionally high level of, uh, of detailing where the, um, the quality is concerned. And this is especially seen on the dial. Because the dial is matte black on this particular version, though various limited runs have been made with different dials, and one has an applied Grand Seiko logo which adds real depth to the dial and is extremely fine metal to give a, a really wonderful aesthetic. One also has very fine brushed and polished finishes seen on the hands and on those indices, so one sees these almost blade-like hands rotate around the dial, which are both extremely beautiful, but also very clever where, where a craftsmanship perspective is concerned. The chapter ring of this watch also appears to be a product of real thought, because it shows the 24-hour graduations on the dial, as opposed to just on the bezel. And the function of this is that it means that, uh, that if you, uh, you happen to be following a different time zone with the bezel turned in another position, you can still very quickly and easily read the, the GMT function on the dial without any sort of other problem, which is very helpful, and I think is an under underappreciated element on the GMT watch. Then one also has a power reserve indicator, which is seen on the left-hand side of the dial, which, which shows the 70-hour power reserve, or rather 72-hour power reserve in total, that this watch has. But aside from simply being a very, very well-specced watch with uh, a Lumabright dial, which allows it to, to glow in the dark in that very, very bright Seiko way, and also having a 200 meter water resistance, the case of this watch is really a thing of beauty. It features a Zeratsu style of finishing throughout, with polished elements which are, are incredibly well finished, to the point where even curved elements will show a perfect reflection of you, which is quite a, dem a good demonstration of just how well formed this watch is, to, uh, to very fine brushed elements on the top of the lugs as well, which allows the whole case to come together as a, um, a really fantastically well united demonstration of Grand Seiko's craftsmanship and the beauty of their products. But I think this only tells half the story, because the movement is something of real interest. And the movement inside this watch is the Caliber 9R66, a 30 joule 72 hour movement from Grand Seiko. But the incredible thing about this movement, apart from the fact that it has that GMT function, and of course also has the power reserve indicator, which is another attractive complication, is that it does run spring drive technology. And what this means is that instead of having a conventional escapement, the watch has a glide wheel, which, which essentially operates a, um, a, a sort of a, a form of brake. And the brake on this watch, which slows down that wheel uh, as it discharges the spring, is, um, is, is, uh, is regulated and indeed uh, kept in terms of its timekeeping by a quartz oscillator. 
And whilst the quartz oscillator is powered by the um, the unwinding spring of the watch, it means that you get an extremely accurate um, uh, type of regulation for the watch. And so as a result, you get a perfectly smooth run to the second hand because there isn't that oscillation that you get with mechanical escapement. But also it means you get incredibly high accuracy of 15 seconds a month. And so this movement is not quartz or mechanical as such, although most of it does fall under that mechanical section, because it is, it is automatically wound as well as having manual winding, and the only bit that isn't mechanical is that escapement, but I feel it's a wonderful hybrid of these two functions to create something which is better than both. And so as a full package, I think this offers an incredibly high level of, um, of quality, where the case is concerned, the movement, the dial, and the functionality is concerned, because you really are getting something unique on the market with this timepiece, and something which no other brand provides in any real form, because it steps aside from what Omega and Rolex are providing, for instance, but competes with them very, very differently, and in a very interesting way. And the price for this watch is £5,500, which I think is a, is a fair price for what this product offers. And so I'll conclude this video there, but do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of my choices, and indeed of this video in general, because the GMT function market is quite an interesting one, because it's not something that everyone uses every day, but still I think is worth talking about. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to see more content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, out.